Back in 2007, the game Super Mario Galaxy was released for the Nintendo Wii. In the game, you play as Mario as he traverses planets in search for Princess Peach, who has been kidnapped by Bowser for the 50th time now. But this time is different because it's in space! It was the third 3D Mario game to be introduced, and offered unique gameplay, and the ability to orbit planets and jump from one to the other. But how did they do it? Well, it's simpler than you might think. This is Mashup Games, and welcome to the first episode of Game Mechanics. So with Unity open, what you're going to do first is create the player. For this tutorial, we'll be using this little dude. This player consists of a rigid body and a capsule collider. You can alternatively use any other collider, but for the simplicity of this tutorial, I would recommend a capsule collider. And with that done, let's create a new script for the player movement. Within this script, we will be controlling the player movement itself, such as a player navigating around the planet and jumping in the air. We want to access the rigid body within the script, so you're going to want to add a private variable for the rigid body. Let's call it body. Then in the start method, you want to find the rigid body component attached to this object, and set it to the variable. And that's it! Thank you for watching this tutorial, join me next time on Of course I'm joking. But this is all we want to do with the player script for now. Let's hop back and create a new object in the scene, which will be our planet. This object needs two circle colliders, one acting as the collider for the planet itself, and one used for the planetary gravity range. So make sure the second collider is set with a bigger radius than the first, and the is trigger checkbox is ticked on the second collider. Next, we're going to want to make a new script to recreate the planet's atmosphere and gravitational pull. We'll call this Gravity Point. We'll attach it to the planet, and then open the script, this time for some proper coding. Now if I remember correctly from my days of physics and maths at school, we're constantly being pulled toward the centre of the Earth by constant gravitational force. So we need a variable holding that gravitational force, which we shall name Gravity Scale. Let's also add a variable called Planet Radius, this will come into use later. Next thing is, we need to pull all objects in range towards the planet's center. So let's create the void on trigger stayed 2 d using a collider as a parameter. This void is always called whenever an object enters the trigger zone, which in this case would be the outer circle collider. Within this void, we need to calculate the force that needs to be applied to the object. First you get the direction from the object to the planet's center, in a vector format by subtracting the object's position from the planet's position. Multiply this by the gravity scale, and we have our gravitational force. Then you want to apply this to the rigid body attached to the object, and bada bing bada boom, we got our gravity! Now let's go back to Unity. But before we enter play mode, we need to revisit the player's rigid body. Oh no, the gravity is on! Let's set that back to zero. There's no gravity in outer space, silly. And let's set the drag to zero, since there's also no drag in space. And let's test this in play mode. Great! The player moves to the planet's surface. But right now the player can't move, so we can't see if they can move around the planet. So let's hop back into our player movement script, and write in the update void. For this tutorial, let's get our movement through Unity's input system. So we'll create a horizontal variable at the top, and then set it in update to be the input.getAxes raw of horizontal. This will either be 0 if the player is not moving, minus 1 if the player moves left, or 1 if the player moves right. Then we want to write a new void fixed update. Let's add a force to the rigid body, which will be the horizontal value set in update. But we don't want the player moving at 1 or minus 1, that's way too slow. So let's create a public float called move speed, and apply it within the add force. Now the player moves at a speed not slow enough to leave you brain dead. Let's back out the script and set the move speed to, say, 10. When we test it we can see yes, the player moves. But in order for this to work properly, the player needs to rotate so that the player is more down to earth. First, let's set this player object to have the tag player. It'll help out for when we hop back into gravity point. At our on trigger stay 2D, 
Let's add an if statement checking if the object in range is a player with compare tag. We don't want the player to snap to the direction if, say, they're in midair, so let's use vector3.move towards. Our current vector is a transform.up, and our new direction is essentially the force direction we are applying, but in the opposite direction. So let's just add a minus. We also want to give a value to be used as the magnitude at which the player turns. So for simplicity, let's use gravity scale again and multiply it by time dot delta time. There, let's test. Now we can see that the player rotates correctly, so that's great. This is great and all. But there is one last thing we need to fix. Yes, there is no drag out in the vast expanse of space. But if there is no drag on the planet, then you can easily do this. Bye! Now this will not do, we don't want to go flying off the planet. So we need to change the player's drag whenever it is in a planet's atmosphere. So let's enter the player movement script once again, and add two new voids. On trigger stay 2D. And on trigger exit 2D. Within on trigger stay 2D, you need to check if the player is in the trigger of a planet. So let's add an if statement with the compare tag again, this time looking for the tag planet. If yes, then we want to change the drag of the body, let's say put this to 1, which is a rigid body's default. And we want to do the same within on trigger exit 2D, but this time changing the drag back to 0. You could maybe instead change it to a very low value, such as say 0 0.2, so that if a player does go flying off the planet, it has slowed down at least a little. There, that's much better. The player is now staying on the planet's surface. This could be fine as is, but it's missing one part of the mechanic from Super Mario Galaxy that made it so fun. Being able to jump from one planet to another. This is actually pretty easy. We no longer need to touch gravity point, but just add the ability to jump within player movement. So let's first make a new float variable. Let's call it jump power. We also want to add a boolean variable that will represent when the player is grounded on a planet so that the player can't jump in midair. Let's call this is grounded. Within update, we want an if statement first checking if the player is grounded, but also checking when the jump button is pressed down. So we want is grounded and input.get button down and put in what button we want to use for jumping. Make sure that this is correctly named within Unity's input system and correctly assigned. And when this is true, we want to apply an impulse force to push the player into the air. So we want body.addForce and get the vector representing what is up to the player. Let's also multiply this by jump power. We also want to set another argument in addForce, one which is by default set, which is the type of force. We want this to be impulse, so that is only done once and not acted like a constant force. And let's go down to on trigger stay 2D. To tell if a player is grounded, we will be finding the distance between the player and the planet's surface. This will be done by accessing the variable planet radius from gravity point, I told you it will come into use later, and subtract the distance between the player and planet's center away from that radius. If this is less than a certain value, we can assume that the player is close enough to the planet to be on the ground. If we add an if statement to check this, this stops any nearby planet which the player may also be in radius of, also affecting the player's grounded boolean. An example of this is where a planet's atmosphere may be overlapping. So we check this, and if the distance is less than a certain value, let's say 0.5, then we want to consider changing the isGrounded variable. So we add another if statement within the if statement, and check if the distance is less than, say, 0.1. Then, if it is, we want to assume the player is grounded, so set it to true, and if not, then we want to set it to false. This can be simplified to simply is grounded equals distance is smaller than 0.5, which will result in a boolean value of true or false anyway. And as you can see now, the player can easily jump between planets, which is great. And with our last little tweak, with planets you tend to have different stratospheres, that is, the gravity is different in certain areas of the planet's atmosphere. So let's implement this in our program. 
hop back into gravity point and add some more float variables. One will represent how big the surface gravity layer's size, so let's call it gravity min range, and the other will represent the furthest distance from gravity min range where the gravity still applies. Let's call this gravity max range. And what we want to change here is the magnitude of gravitational force being applied to the player. So let's create a local variable in on trigger stay 2D called gravitational power and set it to the gravity scale divided by the planet's radius. We do this because the planet's radius directly affects the amount of force needed to keep the player to the surface. So we do this just to be safe. Then we need an if statement that checks that the player's distance is outside the minimum range. So if dist is bigger than planet radius plus gravity min range. Within this if statement, we want to get the distance from the planet's center to the edge of the planet's minimum surface gravity range. And then we want to calculate our gravitational power, which is a little complicated. So we want to multiply gravitational power by the distance between the minimum range and the maximum range but normalize value between 0 and 1, 0 representing the furthest distance, and 1 representing the closest distance. So we put min plus gravity max range, and subtract dist, and divide all of that by gravity max range, and we multiply all of that by gravitational power. Now if we hop back into play mode, we can see the player will be less pulled towards the planet's surface the further away they are, and they will start to accelerate the closer they get to the surface range. Nice! And there we have it, the player can now move around the planet's surface, jump around, and even jump from one planet to another. To make it look nicer in edit mode, I added a lot of variables and objects so you can easily see what sort of things you're tweaking. And if you want to try this out, then all the things I used to make this video, including the code, will be available in the link description below. Send me screenshots of videos of what you've made of it on my Twitter or Discord, and I'll show them off in my next video. But that is it for this edition of Game Mechanics. And join me next time as I recreate another game mechanic from another game. If you've liked this video, then please like and subscribe. This is Mashup Games, signing out.